everyone. I want to welcome you to Wednesday Connect, this midweek time of study and prayer that we have here each Wednesday evening, uh, beginning with the fellowship Zoom meal at 5.30 p.m. and then starting at 6 p.m. There's opportunities for all ages to, to gather in small groups for study, um, for fellowship, for accountability, um, all different things. So I hope you'll take advantage of the opportunities that are available through Wednesday Connect. Here at Jones Memorial United Methodist Church, I am Claire Sauer, the pastor here. A reminder about midweek study and prayer, this time that you're watching right now, this is not a, a live time. This is a pre-recording, but we do want to be in prayer for the prayer requests that you have. You can let us know what those prayer requests are by calling the church office or emailing me by about noon on Wednesdays. Or if you didn't have an opportunity to do that and you have a request that you would like to share and have folks um, pray for, you can just type that into the comments and all of those who are here uh, watching uh, with us and who may watch it later will see that and we can be in prayer for and with you. For the health and safety of our congregation and our community in and around Jones Memorial right now, uh, we are not meeting in person uh, for worship. We are meeting online for worship. That happens at 1030 a.m. each Sunday morning in our cyber sanctuary. You can stream uh, that worship service from uh, the Jones Memorial UMC YouTube channel, from the Jones Memorial United Methodist Facebook page, and you can also find links to that from the worship page on our website, jonesmemorial.com. The season of Lent is very quickly approaching and we will observe Shrove Tuesday on February 16th with a Zoom pancake dinner. Uh, this is an opportunity for fellowship, but there'll also be a time of devotion and personal reflection as we prepare for Ash Wednesday the next day and, and our Lenten observance after that. So I invite you to that. It will begin uh, for the kids at 6 p.m. They're going to be making pancakes together and then uh, everyone else in the church is invited to join in at 6.30. Um, and then on Ash Wednesday, the next day, February 17th, we will have an online video reflection that will post that day as well as opportunities for drive-through imposition of uh, the ashes uh, from 12 to 1 and from 5.30 to 6.30 here at the church. There will be no touch options uh, along with that. And so we will not have Wednesday Connect on Ash Wednesday, um, but I would encourage you uh, to find a way at some point during the day to reflect on that day um, and to begin your Lenten observance. We are working on switching to a new church management system here at Jones Memorial, and you can help us uh, with that process by filling out a form with your current, up-to-date, correct contact information, and you can find that form linked in today's weekly messenger newsletter, and you can also find it linked from our Jones Memorial United Methodist Church closed Facebook page. So if you haven't taken a few minutes to do that, I would encourage you to do so. We would really appreciate it. Here uh, during the midweek study and prayer, we are continuing our Bible study on dealing with stress. This study has paralleled our current sermon series from stress to bless. And we're taking this time to think about some of the stressors in our lives and what we learn from our faith and what we learn from scriptures about how to handle this stress. Tonight, we're going to be talking about stress related to moral choices. So uh, to get us reflecting on this, let me share with you a, a reading from uh, Paul's letter to the Romans. This is in the seventh chapter. And I will be uh, reading beginning in verse 15. So this is Romans 7, verses 15 to 25. Paul writes, I don't know what I'm doing because I don't do what I want to do. Instead, I do the thing I hate. But if I'm doing the thing that I don't want to do, I'm agreeing that the law is right. But now I'm not the one doing it anymore. Instead, it's sin that lives in me. I know that good doesn't live in me, that is in my body. The desire to do good is inside of me, but I can't do it. I don't do the good that I want to do, but I do the evil that I don't want to do. But if I do the very thing that I don't want to do, then I'm not the one doing it anymore. Instead, it is sin that lives in me that is doing it. So I find that as a rule, when I want to do what is good, evil is right there with me. 
I gladly agree with the law on the inside, but I see a different law at work in my body. It wages a war against the law of my mind and takes me prisoner with the law of sin that is in my body. I'm a miserable human being. Who will deliver me from this dead corpse? Thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I'm a slave to God's law in my mind, but I'm a slave to sin's law in my body. So how do we tell when something is wrong, when something's right, when something's good or bad? How do we tell the difference? What are some specific guidelines for a perplexed conscience? What are some helpful, concrete, practical tests for making moral decisions? It's not always easy to tell the difference between right and wrong. Paul expressed this in his letter to the Romans. In this passage we've just heard from the seventh chapter, he reflects, my own behavior baffles me. It's basically what he says. For I find myself doing what I hate, but not doing what I really want to do. Then he goes on to kind of say, I, I often find that I have the will to do good, but not the power. It's an agonizing situation. Does that sound familiar to you? Several years ago, uh, I was working specifically in, in youth and young adult ministry. And one day this college student walked into my office and plopped down on the couch that was adjacent to my desk. We spent a little time getting caught up, but, but then suddenly she got very serious. And she said, Claire, I'm so confused. She said, life on the college campus is hard. Sometimes it's so difficult to tell right from wrong. I don't want to, to compromise my standards. I don't want to let go of my Christian beliefs and values, but I don't want to be a religious snob either. And she went on, she said, the pressure is almost unbearable sometimes. It's so stressful. It's so easy to get confused, to rationalize, to give in. Can you help me? She asked. Can you give me some practical advice or guidelines for making moral decisions? Even beyond the college campus, there are the these are the sorts of dilemmas we face, aren't they? So how do we deal with this stress? Well, one idea is to start with some practical tests for right and wrong. How do we tell the difference, basically? And then once you have these, t these tests that you might use to tell the difference, the next step is to put some helpful guidelines on each of those tests. So let's dive in and consider some tests and some guidelines. And if you find that these don't address your particular situation, perhaps this exercise uh, that we're going to go through together will help you uh, do the same for whatever dilemma you may face. So first, there's the test of just plain common sense. The great mid-20th century preacher, Harry Emerson Fostick, spoke to this point once when he was preaching uh, as the pastor of Riverside Church in New York City. He said, suppose that someone should challenge you to a duel. What would you say? I would advise you to say, don't be silly. As a matter of historic fact, dueling, which was once a serious point of conscious, conscientious honor, was not so much argued out of existence as laughed out, Fostick says. The common sense of mankind rose up against it saying, don't be silly, this is, this is a healthy thing also for a person to say to his own soul, don't be silly. Thinking about this kind of made me wonder, you know, have you ever wondered what things we are doing today either individually or as, as a community, as a human race, that history would call silly and ridiculous. You know, if we could get into a time machine and go 100 or 200 or 500 years into the future and then look back, what things that are happening right now, that we are doing right now, will have been laughed out of existence, eliminated by just plain common sense. If you're tempted to fight 
or to drink excessively or or to be sexually promiscuous if you're tempted to smoke or cheat or lie or gossip or hate or or dabble with dangerous mind bending drugs let your common sense rise up and say to your soul don't be silly you know a good healthy dose of what the old timers used to call horse sense would all serve us well even in our moral dilemmas and and let me just speak to this for a moment and say i realize that it's very easy often the, the stress of moral choices comes from from our souls from our inmost being knowing and saying this is wrong and yet not being able to keep control of our bodies and I don't really have a great um, solution for that, except that, that maybe we begin in the best way we know how, when our bodies feel like they're starting to take over, to keep going back to that innermost part of our soul and put our focus there. Don't be silly, don't do this. Focus on it again and again. Maybe find someone who can help us keep that focus through the difficult times. So the first test is this test of common sense. The second is a test of publicity, and I really like this one. So, so to think about it this way, what if the thing you were proposing to do were brought out in the open? What if everybody knew it? Would you still do it then? So put this moral decision, this conduct that we're not quite sure of, to the test of, of publicity, strip it of its secrecy, get it out in the light. Imagine that it is reported in the morning newspaper or broadcast on the evening news. Would you want the whole world to know about it? Do you want your parents to know about it or your children? What about your friends? Would you want them to know about this thing that you are doing or are thinking about doing? Just imagine it being talked about openly. Imagine it included in the story of your life for your grandchildren to read, you know, a few years from now or many years from now. This is one of the healthiest tests for morality because if what you're doing or thinking about can stand the test of publicity, then it's probably all right. It doesn't matter. You know, if people are gonna know about it, then it's probably okay. But if not, if it's gonna be a problem, if people know that you're doing this or that this is happening, then it's suspect and it's probably wrong. A third test is the test of your best self. So if we are going to become mature Christians, then somewhere along the way, we need to grow up. We have to step out on our own. We have to stand on our own two feet. We have to stop following the crowd or the path of least resistance and we have to decide who we want to be and then we have to be true to that self and that that too is a pretty good good test for morality can i do these things and still be true to who i am and this is a lot this goes back to what that college student was wrestling with right she she was dealing with all these temptations and trying to reconcile that with the fact that some of what she was facing was inconsistent with who she knew herself to be as a, as a Christ follower. There's a, there's a tremendous temptation to become herd minded where we just wander around with our heads down, automatically following the herd, never looking up to find our own direction or our own identity, our own standards, our own morality, our own best self. So if you, if we are facing a stressful ethical dilemma or moral decision, if we're trying to distinguish between right and wrong, then try this test of the best self. Can I do this thing and still be true to my best self? And, and to sort of transition to the last test, let me just say that if we're not sure who our best self is, then we need to look to Christ as our model and we need to try to begin building ourselves according to the model that Christ has set 
for us. And, and as we do that, we become better selves, right? We become uh, better people, better Christians. So that does bring us to the last test, which is the test of Christ. Paul said, wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? And then he says, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. If you feel confused or perplexed or be bewildered and you wonder what's right and what's wrong, then bring yourself, your thoughts back home to Christianity's one unique fact, Jesus of Nazareth. He is our pattern. He is our blueprint. He is our measuring stick. And most importantly, he is our savior. Matthew 7 tells us that a good tree cannot bear bad fruit. Well, the way to stay good is to stay close to Jesus Christ. And here's the key question to ask. Can I do this and still be in the spirit of Christ? Can I say this and still be in the spirit of Christ? Can I participate in this and still be in the spirit of Christ? If not, don't do it because it's wrong. So how do we tell if something's wrong? How do we deal with the stress of moral choices or, or moral dilemmas? Well, we're going to have to test it. We have to apply these tests of common sense and publicity and our best self. But most importantly, and when all else fails or when we are in doubt, we apply the test of Christ. Let's move now uh, to a time of prayer. And I want to share with you uh, these prayer requests that are um, of folks in our congregation and connected with the life of our congregation right now so that we can lift these up. If you have um, others that you want to add to this list, I would encourage you to do so. Just, just type that into the comments uh, and we will see that and we will add um, add those to our own prayers. So let's be in prayer for uh, Dale Larkins, who's a friend of the Rowe family. We also need to be in prayer for the family of Clint Walker, um, who passed away on Sunday. Clint is the grandfather of uh, Melody McDowell. Also continued prayers for Gene Robbins as he recovers from a fall and a hip surgery related to that. Um, continue to be in prayer for the family of Milton Burton, who passed away last week. Please be in prayer for Howard Smith and Helen Parker Petit and Micah Barbie and Dwayne and Tina Broom and Harriet McCreary. And also we want to continue to lift up our family and our friends and all in the community who are um, battling COVID and also those uh, caregivers who are, who are caring um, and taking care of us, whether it's COVID or, or um, some other ailment or surgery or whatever might be going on. We are so thankful for those people and their work, and, and let's uh, be in prayer for them. Will you now bow with me for a word of prayer? Gracious Heavenly Father, what a unique blessing and gift it is to be called your children, to be united as brothers and sisters in Christ with Christ as our head. And especially, God, we are thankful that in Christ, we have the example of how we should live, what we should do, how to be our best selves so that we can experience fullness of life in you. And tonight, Lord, as we think about the many moral dilemmas that we face and the stress that they cause us. We turn to you and we look to Christ and the wisdom and the guidance that he provides in facing these challenges. And I just pray, God, that, that as all these people 
consider um, such moral challenges in their lives. That not only would they they see seek your guidance and your wisdom through that God, but that you would strengthen them and undergird them through this process. Because because often God, it it is difficult to get things turned around to make the right choices. And so I just pray for your strength through every hardship. And God, I also lift to you tonight each of these people, the people whose names we've read, the people whose names have been typed and, and shared with us, the people whose names are written um, in the hearts of, of all who watch, and those, Lord, whose names we don't even know. We know that there is grief in the face of loss right now, God, and we just pray for comfort. We know that there is there is pain and there is sickness and there is um, uh, hardship in, in the face of illness and surgeries and recoveries. And Lord, I pray for your healing hand to be at work and your strength to undergird each of these people. And Lord, I ask that, that where there is um, strife, in within our own selves and our families and our schools and our workplaces in our communities and in our nation around the world god that you would be bring your peace and that that peace would reign in the hearts and the minds of all people and we would indeed look to you turn to you with all of ourselves and allow you to mold us and to shape us and to guide and direct us as your people. So that the glory of your kingdom might be known by people everywhere. I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I hope you will join us back here next week. We will um, be talking about stress and commitment. And in the meantime, you are invited to join us for worship online this Sunday morning at 1030 a.m. I look forward to seeing you there. God bless you. Have a great week.